The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A very warm welcome to you today. Today we offer this Mass for all your intentions, but in particular for Rita Brady on her anniversary. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those who set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. In the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with his whole army to attack Jerusalem. He pitched camp in front of the city and threw up earthworks around it. The city lay under siege till the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. In the fourth month, on the ninth day of the month, when famine was raging in the city, and there was no food for the populace, a breach was made in the city wall. At once the king made his escape under cover of dark, with all the fighting men, by way of the gate between the two walls, which is near the king's garden. The Chaldeans had surrounded the city, and he made his way towards the Arabah. The Chaldean troops pursued the king and caught up with him in the plains of Jericho, where all his troops deserted. The Chaldeans captured the king and took him to the king of Babylon at Riblah, who passed sentence on him. He had the sons of Zedekiah slaughtered before his eyes, then put out Zedekiah's eyes and loading him with chains, carried him off to Babylon. In the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, it was in the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, commander of the God, an officer of the king of Babylon, entered Jerusalem. He burnt down the temple of the Lord, the royal palace, and all the houses in Jerusalem. The Chaldean troops who accompanied the commander of the God demolished the walls surrounding Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan, commander of the God, deported the remainder of the population left behind in the city. The deserters who had gone over to the king of Babylon and the rest of the common people. The commander of the God left some of the humbler country people as vineyard workers and plowmen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. O let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. By the rivers of Babylon there we sat and wept, remembering Zion. On the poplars that grew there we hung up our harps. O let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. For it was there that they asked us, our captors, for songs, our oppressors for joy. Sing to us, they said, one of Zion's songs. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. How could we sing the song of the Lord on alien soil? If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. 
O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. If I prize not Jerusalem above all my joys. O oh, let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. He took our sicknesses away and carried our diseases for us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had come down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. A leper now came up and bowed low in front of him. Sir, he said, if you want to, you can cure me. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him and said, of course I want to, be cured. And his leprosy was cured at once. Then Jesus said to him, mind you do not tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering prescribed by Moses as evidence for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our Old Testament reading, we heard of the Babylonian captivity of the Jewish people. This lasted for about 50 years after Nebuchadnezzar had deported them to Babylon. And perhaps it puts into context our three months of lockdown. In the Gospel reading, we have the amazing story of a leper who comes up to Jesus. Anyone who was afflicted with leprosy in ancient times was in very difficult straits indeed. Biblical leprosy is much wider than modern day leprosy, Hansen's disease, but it definitely includes and overlaps with it. Biblical leprosy was contagious. It affected the whole life of the person because the person had to cut themselves off from society. In fact, they were meant to keep 50, way, 50 feet away from other people. So when we moan about our two meters or one meter distance, let us remember what it was like if we were a biblical leper. They also had to let their hair grow, to become disheveled, their clothing to become disheveled, they had to wear a mask that covered the lower part of their face. And they had to cry out unclean, unclean, and sometimes ring a bell so that people would know that they were in the vicinity. Yes, I'm sure you can see some associations with the present pandemic. It's almost as if the policy of isolation, of wearing face masks, of not being able to go to the barber, all those things that we associate with the present pandemic are almost like a leprosy that has afflicted the whole of the world. The leper has obviously heard something about Jesus Christ and he knows that in Jesus Christ he will find the resolution to all his troubles. Because his problem is not just physical. His problem is psychological, spiritual and social. He's cut off from the rest of society. Imagine the impact upon his life, upon his livelihood, upon his family. Imagine the psychological and spiritual burden of carrying the weight of what was seen by so many people as evidence of sin. Leprosy, that we know now, of course, and as Jesus teaches us, is not always associated with sin. 
but the belief among common people was that leprosy definitely was a direct result of direct sin. And so this man had enormous needs, enormous burdens, and yet he approaches Jesus Christ. And he knows that in approaching him, he's doing something which he shouldn't do. He's breaking the taboos and the rules. Because if he approaches Jesus Christ and touches him, he makes him unclean socially. But what does Jesus do? Jesus actually reaches out to him. He responds to his cry for help. And Jesus could have said, be healed from a distance, but he doesn't. He approaches him and he even touches him. In so doing, he makes himself unclean. But that, brothers and sisters, is the Saviour in whom we believe. The one who has carried all our burdens, all our sicknesses, all our diseases, all our sins. He has taken them into his body so that we can know freedom and redemption. In our prayers this morning, let us pray for our churches as they prepare to reopen on a more permanent basis and for the starting again of public masses. We pray that the church throughout the world would always break down the walls of prejudice and reach out to those who are isolated. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that wisdom would be given to all scientists who are seeking to eradicate modern day leprosy and the current pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those who feel cut off from God, that through the touch of Jesus Christ, they would know that they are welcome in his embrace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all this morning who are sick in body, mind or spirit, May they find their hope and healing in God's love through Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all those who have died recently. We remember, especially on her anniversary, Rita Brady. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And so we join with our mother Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Father, hear these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Alban, Saint Stephen, Saint John Fisher, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, especially remembering today Rita Brady, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The eyes of all look to you, Lord, and you give them their food in due season. Brothers and sisters, I now invite you to make your act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. So let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a lovely day.